Good evening, good morning uh, to you all. This is uh, Professor uh, Ramesh Chandra Gaur. I'm Dean of uh, IGNCA and uh, Head of Kalanidhi Division uh, at IGNCA. Extend a very hearty welcome to you all. In this today's program uh, of virtual book discussion, and in today's uh, program, we are going to discuss, uh, virtually discuss the book uh, entitled The Indian Drum of the King God and the Pakhavas of Nathwara, which is uh, written by Dr. Paolo uh, Akiolo. He is uh, basically a uh, ethnomusicalist, musician, and currently uh, as a Tagore National Fellow, he is in India. And he is contributing significantly in the field of Indian cultural heritage. So let me first thank you, Dr. Paolo, for bringing out such a wonderful book and also agreeing to uh, have a discussion on this book at our platform. Um, I am the one who thanks. Oh, thanks. Oh, uh, it's very grateful to, to you all for participating, for you to organize and, and to all the participants to be here. To share their thoughts and work. Thank you, Dr. Pal. So, uh, for today's discussion, we have a very uh, uh, experienced and esteemed panel, uh, which is going to uh, discuss about a uh, book. Let me uh, extend my thanks and welcome all of them. So, let me uh, welcome Dr. Richard Wydes, uh, who is an Emeritus Professor of Musicology uh, and Professional Research Associate. Department of Music, School of Arts, SOAS University of London, UK. So thank you, uh, Professor Richard, and uh, we are on the program, and we look forward to hearing you in this today's book, book discussion. I'm very happy to be here, and uh, uh, thank you again for inviting me to take part in this very interesting discussion. Thank you, Professor Richard. We have with us uh, Professor uh, Dr. James Kippen. Uh, he is a Professor Emeritus of uh, Ethnomusicology, uh, Faculty of Music, University of Toronto, Canada. So welcome Professor uh, Kippen for uh, agreeing to be a panelist despite of your very early morning time in Canada. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, organizing this very, very interesting panel on a great book. We're looking forward to the discussion. Thank you. We have with us uh, Professor Dr. Sunira Asliwal. Uh, she is currently a uh, uh, faculty at Department of Music, uh, University of Delhi. Uh, a researcher. Uh, she has also served as a Dean of uh, Faculty of Music and Fine Arts and Head of the Department of Music. Thank you, Professor uh, Asliwal, for your uh, being uh, on the panel and agreeing uh, on our very uh, request and uh, we, are, we welcome you and thank you for your participation. Thank you very much Mr. Gore for inviting me to give my, uh, to uh, say something about the subject and uh, thank I thank you for that and Mr. Joshi. Yes. Uh, we have specially invited uh, Pandit ja Daljan Sharma, an artist uh, who is a Pakhavas exponent of uh, Natwara Gharana. Uh, he's uh, working with Department of Music, University of Delhi. So uh, on the request, our request, he is here to share some of his thoughts uh, during the program. So thank you, uh, Pandit Daljan Sharma ji, for your kind presence. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Our, Member Secretary, thank you, Dalchandi. Our Member Secretary, uh, Dr. Sachidana Joshi, was supposed to chair this discussion, but due to some other engagement, he will not be able to join. So uh, I will take care of all those uh, issues and formalities. So uh, basically, like we have uh, some eminent panel uh, from abroad. Uh, just a few words about this organization, Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts. is a premier research and academic institute uh, in the field of art and culture, it's responsible for preservation, promotion, and propagation of uh, Indian cultural heritage through various uh, uh, programs. Uh, we have various divisions, uh, Kalanidhi, which is a cultural resource center. We have Kalakosh, which do research on textual 
Janpad Sampada division basically on lifestyle, uh, tribal issues and other uh, issues concerning intangible cultural heritage. Uh, and uh, we organize several kind of programs. Uh, the Kalanidhi, which is organizing this today program, which I am heading, uh, is uh, having uh, about 300,000 of manuscripts on different aspects of Indian cultural uh, and uh, knowledge system. We have uh, a print reference library, which is having uh, about 250,000 books. The space of the library is the personal collection of eminent scholars, uh, about 25. Then we have cultural archive, which is having buried uh, kind of photographs, music, uh, and, and uh, uh, sculpture, uh, about 45 personal collection of eminent scholar in our cultural archive. We have visuals, more than 100,000, all digitized available in both digital and uh, print format, uh, visual format in form of slides. So with this great collection, uh, uh, our reference library organized uh, every month a discussion on various books, sometimes two books, sometimes three books, sometimes one book. So in that series, today we have organized this uh, uh, program, a uh, virtual book discussion on the Indian drum of the King God and the Pakhavas of Nandwara. And uh, besides uh, IGNC as a dean uh, responsible for about uh, all academic programs uh, and research, uh, nine PG diploma courses and about five certificate courses, uh, I do represent India in UNESCO uh, in Memory of the World program and also Indigenous Languages. Uh, and uh, with these uh, uh, activities and program, uh, IGNC is contributing very significantly uh, to the uh, worldwide uh, community, research community in providing resources, providing various kind of publications. We have more than 1,000 publications published so far uh, on different aspects of Indian cultural tradition and different form of arts. So with these words of introduction, I once again uh, welcome all of our panelists. And uh, as per the structure of the program, let me first invite uh, the author of the book, that who can be the better than author himself to introduce the books to panel and the, also to the audience. So now it's uh, uh, over to uh, Paolo. Please uh, start here. Okay. Again, I will start again thanking all of you. I'm just seeing also Bandita Chasharma. I'm very glad that he is here also participating since he is also a protagonist of the book, and very, very happy that he is here also with all of us. Thank you. So, um, and, um, I can say that maybe I'm not the right one to introduce the book in the sense that I've written everything. And at this point of my research, I'm looking to something that is on the way of this, uh, uh, that is rooted in, in that book since my research in Kerala is continuing uh, the, um, the research that started from there. It, stem, it, it stems actually from that book. And uh, uh, since the book it itself is a, a kind of history of a process, I, I would, it, it is quite difficult also to synthesize it uh, and in, in, a very, in very few words. And since you are there, and I have such uh, eminent scholars and people who has also inspired my work with their works. So I, instead of speaking of the book, I would add something to, to it, to say something more. I mean, instead of, again, telling something of the book, which you have already read, I would add something that I, it was not possible to do it for publication reasons. I mean, a section of my research was devoted to um, iconography of music. And the editor, uh, the publisher, um, had a limit in the images. So, and of course, and since my, uh, I, the research on images was, has been very important also, um, I would like to share with you uh, a few images and not take too much of time because I'm also, uh, I would like to, to know your opinion also, to see 
to listen to your words and even uh, maybe if, if there is a space for uh, interactions also if there is some something to discuss so i'm, I'm going i'm trying to share the screen to i i will start with uh, with uh, gajalakshmi which is in, in fact another uh, according to me uh, the bakavaj itself mirdang itself is a uh, another representation and the synthesis of the heritage and the, of the drum itself. And it has been very useful for me also as a, a kind of meditation tool to understand the Bhagavad uh, and the, the Mridang, mostly the ancient Mridang. So these are different iconographies of which I speak in the, in the texts. But so uh, what I would like to start uh, to share now is the process through images is the process of the changing the evolution of the body of the drum, which is one of the aspects of this uh, continuous evolution. So uh, this, the, the first image, see, this one is from Daigiri Caves in uh, uh, second century BCE. And the drums here, we have the first uh, version of the Meridanga, the most ancient, that is uh, in two, a set of two or three drums. Here we can see quite clearly two, and again in association with dance. So this is, uh, as far as I know, the most ancient image. The only few of the just to go through the, the evolution of the drum I collected here. Uh, so this is again another Images, this is from uh, Barut, almost the same period. And the represent here we can see also leather straps. Again, another representation here in the detail, three drums. This is quite clear. And again, straps can be, can be seen. Again, in uh, dancing. And here we are at Arangabad. Again, drum scene. Although uh, the, the size of the set changes, of the drums changes, we can see that there is a format. There is a, a, a common uh, pattern, which I put here just to make it clearer and altogether. We can see that even from different perspectives, this is from high. Perspectives here is usually it is uh, the the drum maybe has been a set was composed by two or three drums. It was called usually three. It was called tripushka. So we can see from different angles and here also in paintings. And the study I've done it's synthesized here in these images, uh, which shows the distribution of the this kind of instrument in the subcontinent. And this is an image which synthesizes, uh, in particular, this kind, this version, which was used in all scenes, because all these images belongs to uh, dance, arts dance scenes, so they are performing, they were performed in uh, courts. And this is one of the most beautiful, I think, and also uh, clear image of Courts and also full of the, shows the, the presence of the importance of auspiciousness due to the presence of women. So much of courtesans. The other, um, this is what I also argue in the uh, text, is that the set, this set of drum was associated both to court and to nat, um, Nataraj, Shiva Nataraj, the dance of Shiva. Uh, here again, a few uh, images showing that this is from south, and here again we are in Rajasthan, and we can see that the uh, the shape of the instrument of the set is quite clearly uh, continuously going through the ages. And here again, uh, this map which synthesizes the consistency of this the shape of the drums in all over uh, India and in time. And up to the, this, uh, the while the court scenes 
We have a representation of courts since up to the 8th century. Um, see, um, Nataraja is depicted the drums, uh, uh, the set of drums accompanying the dance of Nataraja, which is also the 13th century, 13th, even 14th century, mostly in Rajasthan. The, the latest representations are in Rajasthan. So when we, we arrive at uh, the, 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 the end, around the end, from the 8th century uh, onwards, apart from the representation of, of the set of Midang associated uh, with Nataraja, uh, this, this set uh, becomes obsolete and uh, disappears from representations. And also, it is not more mentioned uh, in texts, apart from being uh, part of the past history. And we find in this period an innumerable representations of uh, uh, drums, but the, in these times we, we, the set disappears completely and we have a number of various barrel drums appearing in this period that according to texts are here, I'm just going through some of them, uh, we can see that they are different, although, although the shape looks similar, but some are, are cylindrical, some others are barrel shaped. The um, dimensions of the measures of the drums are different, and even the leather straps are different. Here again, uh, an image just synthesizing. <clears throat> so here, in this period, we, that lasts a few centuries, from the 8th to the um, 16th almost century, we have innumerable uh, drums, various drums uh, in different forms, barrel drums, being mentioned uh, often as Mridanga, but Mardala or uh, Muraj, but uh, they are uh, in fact only one instrument, one, one barrel drum, having different features which are uh, in contrast with the previous set, which cannot be uh, identified with a single instrument, according to me, and according also to the descriptions provided by text, because I've done also between images and texts. So we start having a, uh, the first representation of uh, Pakavaj, um, and uh, this drum is also recognized as identified with the Meridanga in the Nartana Nirnayam. Um, with in, in the 16th, 16th century, 17th century, we can say also, with more, a certain degree of correspondence with the present day instrument. And in this picture, I think it's the most clear one, since it clearly shows the presence of the Atta and the CI on the other side. And the instrument appears just like it is today. Um, it is not clear whether there are three skins, uh, but then uh, the Nartanik Naya provides this uh, evidence. So, and this is, the, of course, present-day uh, package. I've gone through these images quite quickly uh, because, as I said before, I would like to leave more space to, to you, to you all other participants, in, in case to necessary to clarify some aspects or to discuss of some points in the text. But uh, it was my pleasure to also share some of these may the images I've collected are really a lot, really a lot, more than various hundreds. But this is a very, very synthesis of them. So I would leave word. Thank you, Dr. Paolo, for uh, giving glimpses of your work. Uh, and uh, it is very interesting to see the, the images and the, and the various uh, stages of development you have narrated in your introduction. And I'm sure if these glimpses are so interesting, how the book is going to be, I'm sure people will be very curious to read this book. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, uh, this program is also uh, live on Facebook, live of IGNCA, so that several uh, 
individual praises. And also we have uh, about uh, 30 plus uh, participants who are with us online. And uh, I, I welcome them uh, on Zoom and also welcome all the participants who are currently uh, with us on Facebook Live. So uh, thank you, Dr. Palo. So let's move ahead with our program. And now I would like to invite Professor uh, Dr. James Capon, uh, Professor Emeritus uh, Ethnomusicologist, uh, Faculty of Music, University of Toronto. So Professor Capon, now it's over to you. Uh, thank you, Dean Gaur. Um, thank you to the other very distinguished participants. Um, thank you to Panditji, Absi Milkar Bari Hushi Hui. And uh, thank you, Paolo, for um, a lovely little presentation with marvelous uh, imagery. Um, I should um, preface this by saying that uh, back in the 1990s, I'd written three chapters of a book on Pakavaj, hoping to do what you've actually just achieved. And it was back in the day when and computers crashed and people lost their files and I lost all my data and I never returned to it. So I'm very pleased that you persisted and have written a marvelous book on the coverage on Mardang. And um, uh, I congratulate you because um, I thoroughly enjoyed reading your book. Um, I saw two and a half years ago um, three or four chapters of your book, uh, which were sent to me by the publisher for my opinion. And I was uh, uh, very keen to see this work uh, published. Um, I did at the time make some comments about things that I thought needed to be addressed. And either you addressed them or they were in parts of the book that I had never seen before um, in chapters that perhaps were not sent to me. But when I read this book, um, I was uh, really truly fascinated uh, by the multi-layered and very nuanced picture that you painted. Um, that um, I think, uh, first of all, creates a very persuasive trajectory for the development of the modern Pakavaj from its ancient roots in the Madhavang. I think that this is um, perhaps one of the most significant uh, contributions of the book. Uh, and at the same time, I think you've given us a very uh, deep and also very nuanced um, image of um, the ideational Pakavaj or Mardam, the um, sometimes mythological, sometimes very real, uh, but always, I think, in conversation with each other, there is um, a, a world of Pakavaj, which I think is, uh, is is symbolic as well as very practical. And I think you capture that in the very, very interesting discussions you have about um, its meaning over time. And uh, I think you've done a, a really wonderful job. I'm someone who's particularly interested in the uh, modern period by which I really mean the 18th and 19th centuries. And um, when I, I read your book, I still had uh, many questions, uh, mostly relating to that particular period, because I think in some ways it's um, less covered uh, in, in your writing than I think the earlier periods, which I, I found fascinating and about which I know less. And um, I um, first I had some questions for you that I thought you might elaborate on in order to offer some further insights into your thinking and your research. And the first question was, if we go by the very, very large number of artistic representations of women playing Pakavich, especially in the 17th, but particularly 18th century, um, how does this affect your argument for the empowering masculinity of the drum? Uh, I, in, in fact, the in images, uh, female musicians are much more than drummers, male drummers. Um, and while often 
male drummers are also. Uh, I don't think it. The association, the, the argument of masculinity, uh, I think it, it is not uh, um, uh, changed by the presence of women in the sense, from the symbolical point of view, I mean, because it, this is, we have to think of this period as a period, all history as a period where symbolism is very important. So from a symbolical point of view, uh, the, the presence, uh, it is a male instrument, also because of uh, its it sound, its powerful sound. And while uh, um, at the same time, uh, it's, it's used in, a, in, a, in various ways. It is, the, it is depicted not, not only played, it is played also by, for instance, uh, six in, in uh, context of six. So it, it, it is an instrument since it, has, it was what I think in synthesis that it was accepted by Mughal in the Mughal court and it became a symbol of this uh, male masculinity the warriors also, Mughal warriors. But um, since courts, the Mughal court uh, was so crucial, it spread the, the, the importance of the instrument and the instrument itself spread all over the empire. And it was then used in, a, in, a, in various ways and also accepted in various ways. Also, the, the, that's what, this is what explains also the different, because if we go in Oris, we have also uh, the, the Mardala, the devil Mardala, the, the Mardala, which is played in the Oris dance. It's a very similar instrument, but at the same time, it's different, particularly the, the, the bass sound side, or the presence of the CI. So I think that the main uh, content of and symbolical content of the instrument was associated to this to the Mughal nobility and warriors, and so to masculinity. But since it was so important, it was it and spread uh, like anything from the central of uh, empire. So it, it was accepted and taken in, in different ways. Of course, also in, in women uh, uh, side of the course. No? In, uh, so, and it was adopted in a, in a, in a different way. This is okay. what I think. Sure. But then all, all over time, again, it, it changed. And this, the, the, the most important aspect, also lose its strength. And then it, this is what I try also to explain in, uh, to, in, the, in the text. That is a continuous yeah. process that uh, it is made out in kind of curves. So it has, uh, it goes in one way and then changes again. Then it is absorbed in a new way and then it moves like this. It's a continuous flow. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, um, of course, I mean, as you point out too, um, and as we've always noticed, women disappear through the course of the 19th century uh, from playing instruments in general, I think. Um, whereas, of course, earlier women are playing all kinds of instruments pretty much all the time. So their disappearance, is that um, due to an argument that you make for masculinity or is it for some other reason? I think it's uh, mm, mostly for for this, uh, not all. It, here we have to see also the, um, the coming into the play of uh, English, the, the British. Yeah. So, and with their contribution, that is, uh, I think, very strong and contributes to uh, to strengthening also the masculine, uh, exactly. masculine aspect. But at the same time, also, it's again a question of the the. Um, it's a decline that comes also like a flower and flowers, and then once it has completed its flourishing, it starts. So it's something uh, like this. So it was a, a, it, it spread like this and then lost its strength. It, it's a mixture of aspects, I think. They, they are intertwined and overlapping. I um, have read and um, translated. Um, 
some chapters from an 1869 text called the Sarmaya e Ishrat. And um, it's a very interesting chapter, which is informed fully by two musicians, both Muslims, both Dhadis, um, both Pakavaj players, uh, who also played tabla. And um, uh, again, I'm, uh, this is something that I had noted before. Um, when one looks at um, the lists of players that uh, are mentioned by um, Imam, Karim uh, Imam, in uh, the 1860s as well, when one looks at other texts, one sees lists and lists of Pakavaj players who were Muslim Haris. And I'm wondering if there's still, uh, of course, they too have largely uh, disappeared over time, especially over the course of the 20th century. And I'm wondering if there's still a chapter to be written uh, on them. I, I, I can say that I have no, uh, according to the sources, I found uh, I could not tell anything about it. But of okay. course, if sources are there, it, it would be interesting to point out clearly what was, what might have been the using contributions to with. Although, okay, so uh, theoretically, I think that is what I argue in the, the book is that the instrument is mostly associated with the Hindu concept. Of yeah, yeah, sure. No, I mean, I, I do understand that too, but I don't think it necessarily excluded Muslims from playing it. And absolutely, I mean, from, from, from a long time back, there's, there's a, there's a you know, steady stream of, of, uh, of them that do it. What... Um, before the, um, as you say, incomprehensible uh, Murdang Sagar by uh, Kanchan Das, um, what other sources before that uh, did you were you aware of? But, uh, that was about 1911, wasn't it? But are you speaking on uh, Natwara Garana or in general? Yes, yes, I'm speaking about the book on Pakavaj by uh, Kanchan Das. I found uh, only the, the a copy, a printed uh, a photocopy. Right. Then I, I met uh, uh, Mr. Prakash Kumarat and he showed me the original. Oh, I see, yes. right. But bef and before this, uh, did you have access to other sources? No. Okay. So um, I should tell you about the Mardan Manjari. And this was written in 1873 by Raja Sir Shorendra Mohan Thakur. Okay, um, this is in, new, yes. And I'm, I've mentioned it in, in my other writings before. Yes. It runs to close to 200 pages. And um, I've just finished a translation from the Bengali of this. And it's a very interesting text. I, I One of the most interesting things about it, I think, is that it is informed by a man called Kshetra Mohan Goswami, or Khetra Mohan, if you want to go by the Bengali pronunciation. And uh, Khetra Mohan Goswami was uh, from the Vishnupur Karana. He uh, sang, he played many different instruments. Uh, he certainly played Pakhavaj. And, um, but also, the other people that um, contribute repertoire to this book are Bengali Bhadralok, uh, nobles, effectively. Um, and also uh, there are many Hindu and many Muslim uh, Pakavaj players as well. And it seems that it was an, an instrument that really did populate Calcutta in those early days of uh, the British Raj um, and was symbolically very important too. So this is something perhaps uh, um, that uh, I can share with you uh, in future. And I think you'd be in a good position to uh, make some more general sense of it since you have so much else going on in terms of the context for the Murdang or for college. Um, so the point is, I think that there are some interesting sources out there that are yet to be discovered. And uh, you know, I look forward to hopefully sharing some of those things uh, with you. In the same vein, um, uh, why do you think it is that there are so few texts on Pakavaj in, in comparison with the texts that we've received on Tabla 
something that you are highlighting also, it's uh, relating to the Bilidanga Manjari. I uh, knew it, I have a copy, but I do not know uh, Bengali, so I did not have access to the text. I, the, relating to the, 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 the last question, I think uh, there may be also texts like uh, that still have to be discovered. It, it might be. And at the same time, I, what I think is that also uh, this instrument, again, it was, it was particularly associated. They might have been um, 6th, 17th century. I think that we should, if we could have a text of the 6th, uh, 6th uh, 17th, 16th, 17th century, uh, that would be extremely useful for, uh, for the understanding. Because after that, it's a tabla gain uh, success, and so they overshadow also the uh, the, the, the bakavage so slowly. So uh, I think it's and also because this, this for the aura that is associated to this instrument. Um, one, one last question, because I don't want to take up too much time, and and and, and um, I want to let other people speak. But you write of the stuti. Parans, uh, bull parans, uh, you write of images and these sorts of things. Do you have any sense how old these may be, what the origins of these may be? Uh, I think they are the Stuti Parans. Mm, Stuti Parans only you are speaking? Or, uh, yeah, well, okay, just, just about those anyway. I think, so I've done a parallel research while, while I was writing this book, and I found that there are uh, similar components positions, even in Orissa and uh, also in North India and in South India, of course, almost all over, they are associated with dance. And these kind of compositions are uh, maybe quite old. I, I mean, second millennium, but uh, it's not precise. I cannot say precisely how old they are, but surely they are, they are quite old. Of course, uh, and I, I cannot say anything about any specific composition. This is, this is I cannot say. Um, only no. okay. uh, from my experience with um, uh, Ram Kishore Das, he, he used to tell me this is composition by this man. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he had no words about it. We can yeah. ask uh, Andy Darshan Sharma if he knows something sure. more about recent compositions. But anyway, I'm sure that this kind of Paran, something like this, uh, Studi Paran are uh, associated to, and this I can share with you later. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, I know. I have hundreds and hundreds of these things and very many different versions of the, you know, so even the same Studi Paran. My general impression, however, is that these things probably are old, but that they have exploded in popularity through the 20th century. Absolutely. No, no, no. I, sorry to interrupt you. I'm no, saying please. the same thing. It's uh, uh, relating to the... Um, I think that they are also associated with uh, nationalism and with the, yes, the fortune exactly. uh, in this sense. Uh, so they are recently... And they got fortune in the uh, 20th century. But I was telling that there are uh, some compositions which have been, which have found some sources, and it seems that they are centuries old. But I do not have a precise, uh, only short, uh, short pieces from these compositions taken from, coming from uh, um, Orissa in particular, but they were associated with dance, not only, but they were not simply uh, drum compositions. No, Although, I think that does make sense. This, uh, this is what I think. Although, uh, but th this is quite complicated to explain in short time. I think that is it, there is a kind of thread that uh, connects Nadia Shastra with this, with this uh, kind of compositions. Yeah. But I, I will, with this we can share in... Uh, oh, sure. Uh, yes, definitely. Be happy to do that. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak, and I'm very happy now to hear others uh, um, what they have to say. Thank you, Dr. Kiffin, for 
raising a very interesting and pertinent questions. I, I'm sure Palu was comfortable with all of them. And uh, see, another interesting observation you made uh, regarding the literature on Akavas as compared to another field like Tabla and all this. That's, that's, I'm also a little uh, surprised. And uh, with the vast knowledge you possess, uh, you have you have quoted a number of references. It will be really interesting in having a list of references, which we might like to uh, keep it in our resource centers. Like uh, people should know about uh, all these valuable resources. Uh, one of them you mentioned that uh, that very historical document. So I would uh, like Madan to locate Manjari, yes. and Madan Manjari. So we'd like to uh, keep it uh, or procure a copy of that uh, for our resource centers. Mr. God, Sarmaya, yeah, Ishtar, El, also. Okay. Sarmaya, Sarmaya yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the Sarmaya. So, this is, yeah. this is the first edition of the Mridang Manjari. Oh. And uh, right. it's falling apart, but um, anyway, it's, it's here. So, yeah. anyway, Thank you. Thank it's, you. it's done now, so I'm happy to share it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, let's move to our uh, next speaker, Professor Dr. Richard Bajis, uh, Emeritus Professor of Musicology and Professional Research Associate, Department of Music, School of Art, SOAS University of London, UK. Uh, Dr. Uh, Richard, over to you. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Gore. And um, uh, again, thank you for inviting me to, to take part in this very, very interesting discussion. Um, I first met uh, Paolo Pacciola uh, sitting across a table in uh, the University of Durham, um, where he was defending his PhD thesis. And um, I and the uh, internal examiner, um, it was our job to, uh, to grill him uh, about uh, what he had written. And we did so for a very uh, in a couple of hours or more, um, discussing all the, the many fascinating aspects of this, this work, which um, uh, embraces so many different, different uh, um, aspects. And um, uh, I think in our report, um, uh, uh, at the end of the process, we, we said something to the effect that we, we very much hoped that um, uh, he would publish this thesis in a suitable form. And um, uh, so I'm, I'm absolutely delighted that uh, that has come to fruition. I know from our experience that if you don't publish your PhD within uh, three or four years, let's say, then it, it, it never comes out or <laughs> it, 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 uh, you, you get interested in other things and they take over. Um, and the, the thesis may never see the light of, of day. Um, so now the world can read uh, uh, Paolo's work. Um, and um, and that's that's wonderful. And um, as um, Professor Kippen mentioned, that there are uh, new things in the book and things that have been revised or updated or modified from the thesis version. And so, um, yeah, it's an even more impressive piece of writing uh, than was the thesis. Um, uh, but but in his work. Um, it seems to me that uh, uh, Paolo has, on the one hand, he's not written a conventional music ethnography, which would be um, you know, an account of a tradition as it is today, um, from, written from first experience and uh, uh, detailed interviews with musicians and so forth. Paolo has done all that, but uh, in his uh, work, he has pushed the boundaries of in investigation uh, way back into the historical dimension. Um, and um, in order to understand the present through the past, and uh, to some extent, perhaps the past through the present, uh, um, in doing so, um, I think he has very successfully avoided two um, 
possible pitfalls uh, with this kind of research, one of which um, is to assume a direct and unbroken continuity between uh, the centuries BC and the present day, which of course is a very tempting and seductive uh, line to take. Um, on the other hand, he's also avoided the view that Indian classical music was invented sometime around 1870 um, and uh, is an inherently uh, modern uh, phenomenon, which, which some um, ethnomusicologists might wish to, to argue. Um, and, uh, but, of course, uh, the, the reality is something between those two extremes, and it's a complex reality involving all sorts of continuities and continuities. And uh, so I think that uh, Paolo has um, negotiated this, this uh, terrain very successfully, um, not ignoring the richness of, of the archeological record and the textual record um, and the, uh, the artistic record, bringing all those things uh, into the discussion. Um, uh, and so avoiding another pitfall, which might have been to look only at texts or only at uh, iconography. Um, uh, of course, uh, these things complement each other and have to be integrated into a, a um, uh, approach uh, such as this. He's also, I think, avoided another pair of um, uh, pitfalls, one of which is would be uh, with a with an uh, this particular instrument, I think, uh, would be to um, uh, see it as a purely uh, ritual or sacred instrument, an instrument associated purely with temple uh, performance um, and so on. Uh, or on the other hand, and, uh, as purely a, a court music, uh, a classical music uh, instrument, um, or, or because the, the instrument has many roles. Um, uh, it has an important dance role as well as a accompaniment role and a soloistic role, uh, a ritual role and uh, an entertainment role. All these things are part and parcel of the uh, tradition of the college. Remember very vividly uh, in my first visit to India in 1975 to six, um, attending um, the second Benares Drupad Mela. Um, the first one had been held the year before. And up to that point, I'd been in India for several months and I had found it enormously difficult to find any, uh, any way into the subject of Drupad, which I was interested in or Pakawaj, which of course is part of that uh, subject. Um, and then to my astonishment for, for three or four days, uh, every night, uh, there were continuous performances of uh, both vocal Drupad, uh, but also, um, this was something entirely new to me, um, one after another, um, lengthy Pakawaj solos uh, played by extraordinary virtuoso uh, performers. Um, uh, one of, I think they included um, uh, at least one of, of uh, Paolo's uh, first teachers uh, uh, of the Pakawaj. So um, this was a revelation uh, to me and um, it kind of underlined the fact that, that Drew uh, sorry, Drupad and Bakawaj are a kind of uh, musical subculture which um, is there, has always been there, um, but you need to know how to get into it, where the entrances are, um, and then you discover a, a, a remarkable richness. Um, clearly, the uh, temple tradition of Nath Dwara is another uh, way in uh, to the college tradition. So uh, it's very important uh, that um, Paolo has uh, explored that uh, particular scene.
But I, I wonder, Paolo, whether you have any thoughts about about this. It's always um, surprised me, and, and reading your book, it surprises me all, 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 all the more that um, Druppard and Pekalic still have this, um, you could think of it as a marginalized state or as a subculture, uh, a very special, a niche um, uh, area of, of Hindustani music. Um, and yet it has all the sort of prestige and, as you show, the, the connections, the symbolic connections with uh, India's glorious past going right back into, the, into antiquity. Um, you would think that it would uh, have presence in the public sphere, uh, particularly uh, in an era of, of um, uh, nationalist politics since the beginning of the 20th century. Um, and yet uh, the dominant uh, forms of, of Hindustani music are still khel, tabla, sitar, sarud, and so on. So I, do you have a sense of, uh, is it is it maybe because performers themselves are um, not concerned to seek the the public limelight, um, or, or or what, or, or because they we know in the past they tended to be somewhat secretive about certainly um, teaching instruments like uh, the bean. Don't know whether this applies to the college also that there was an element of secrecy about it. Um, do you have a sense of of this? Um, you know what has happened to college as part of the Drupad tradition in the 19th and 20th centuries? What I think is that as the, 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 Pakavaj, as, uh, the Pakavaj as well as Drupad as a form, the Pakavaj and both for their sound, they, they could be very well accepted because they are very powerful uh, in themselves. Mm. Some kind of experiments have been done also, for instance, if I'm getting your, your question properly, some, uh, some experiments have been done to also to uh, recollocate and, uh, the sound of Pakavaj, for instance, in a different context. And again, with Rupert, uh, there are masters, gurus, who are uh, trying, mixing, some way. The form in itself, in the real tradition, the line of the tradition, uh, Pandit Darshan Sharma uh, is certainly one who is keeping this tradition alive, but at the same time giving uh, a, some a fresh approach because of his, uh, I think, aesthetic uh, uh, capacity and, and is very, very much nuanced. So it's, he is able to produce a, a vast array of sounds. So this, and he's also able to discuss with people, to introduce the instruments, even in a context like uh, Drupad Mela, but also in other contexts in, in Delhi itself. So uh, uh, if the Pakavaj, remaining just a moment to, to the Pakavaj itself, if the instrument is presented just like it is, uh, in the, the tradition, as it has arrived to this point, uh, with this masculine and vir rasa so proudly and so uh, forcefully also expressed, I think that the instrument loses its beauty, parts of its beauty. That is one, just one section, one one color of the instrument, which is yeah. very rich. So, and of course, also the audience will, will get this kind of lost. And one something which I think that is, uh, but uh, he and also some other Pakavaj players is trying to, to write, uh, to compose new repertoires. Uh, but I think uh, this is one aspect. And they, of course, have to face, in any case, uh, uh, the contemporary India, which is not at all, it seems to me, interested in classical music in general, even Kayal is not so so much strong now. So, so there, there are any other, what they call fusion, uh, 
it is so um, uh, negatively uh, addressed in India. It is not always so because there is there are also nice uh, musicians which they who are trying to create something new. That is not bad. The problem I, I don't think it's only secrecy. I think that the problem of Drupad in general is that it's a closed society. It is uh, not only that they are um, like uh, uh, we say in uh, Agori Towers. Is it so that you say in English also? Uh, uh, they, they are too proud of their tradition and they highlight too much their status. And in this way, maybe they are not everybody, of course, not all of them, but in this way, they lose the contact with the present time. It's not only a question of uh, secrecy. Something is there, of course, because they don't want, not everybody is ready to share what they, he or she knows. This is true. I've also a personal experience uh, about this, uh, this aspect. But I think that they are, they should open as a society. Even in Rupert Mela, if you go there, you see that they are very, too, too much connected and too reverted into themselves as a group rather than to the others. As a, so I think this is something that is uh, against, the, not the form in itself. Although, for instance, we can see that uh, uh, Dagar uh, style as, is much more uh, well accepted than other styles, which are more aggressive, maybe, although they are interesting, but also because Drupad, uh, I mean, um, Dagar Bani performance, they have, they have had, again, I come to the point, they, they have been able to present the form in uh, in the proper way to a contemporary audience and also to uh, Western uh, audience. That is yeah. very much important, uh, I think, for, for all of them, because uh, the, the audience, I think, is wider in West than in, uh, in India. Or, uh, so I think they have been able to produce. But if we see in the history, this is a very important aspect, aspect in every art. So it is upon to musicians, in this particular case, musicians, to um, present their own art in the proper way for the proper context and for to the contemporary audience. This is what I think. So uh, I I was enchanted by Drupad and Drupad music and Drupad Bakavaj. Um, but of course. Uh, it was because of my, I think that sound has driven me to also all this research. It was something else. But for common, for someone who is mostly interested in, it has to be conveyed in a different way. This is what I think. I, I don't know whether I applied properly to your questions or if you had some other aspects. I, I, I think that's very fair. Very fair uh, answer, um, and um, uh, as uh, as usual, you, um, uh, you 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 see various different aspects um, to this. It's not not a case of one one single factor. Um, I would only um, add that, of course, um, it's um, very common and very natural for a group of um, uh, people of whatever kind, whether artists or something else, if they feel that they are in a minority, um, they become more inward looking. Um, and of course, you know, uh, they hang on to their tradition, the more... Uh, I the, think, the, sorry, sorry, more, just one thing. If they feel threatened uh, uh, as a minority. So it's a kind of self-compounding situation. Mm -hmm. But I, but I, sorry, sorry to, to interrupt you. But what I think also in the context of Drupad is that the, um, the, the status of Drupad 
works against its diffusion in the, in the, from the point of view of musicians, because they are too proud of it. And so they, they are not ready to, uh, to go towards people. This is what I think may be also. Your argument, I, I agree, I mean, that's an aspect. But I think that there is also, at, at least it was my feeling there, and of course, it is not of uh, all Drupad representative, mm. uh, but I think that uh, the, the, the status of Drupad, the fact that Drupad is the, the most ancient uh, uh, musical form in northern India, and it does this uh, continuity that's been living for so many centuries, and they are representative of these particular uh, traditions. Of course, it is exceptional, it's something to, to be uh, proud of. But I think the excess of proud pride can be uh, can something that produces again, uh, that you don't find anyone at the same level. And you feel too gross yourself. <laughs> Well, this is a universal problem, isn't it? Yes, yes. But uh, it, but compounded when when people feel uh, threatened by being in a minority, uh, it all, all, all plays its well. Well, thank you for that um, very interesting comment. Um, I. I don't really have any other questions for you. Um, um, I like very much what you say um, at one point in the book about the Bacarwage being more than a musical instrument. Um, although I would question whether that is in fact um, really anything very uh, special um, as um, musical instruments uh, all over the world, and not only musical instruments, but other kinds of physical artifact um, often do take on uh, uh, characteristics um, that, that, that go beyond their materiality, shall we say. Um, uh, just yesterday, I was um, listening to a lecture by a colleague um, on um, Jewish Torah sc scrolls, um, which are venerated by their communities, that they are in fact treated as persons. They are not things, they are, they are persons. And if a scroll is no longer fit for, for use, it, it can be buried in a graveyard as though it were a person um, and, uh, and so on. So um, this idea of the, the significance of a material object far exceeding its its simple materiality is is I think uh, a very widespread phenomenon. Yes. Uh, clearly, that with musical instruments there are special aspects to this, and and uh, I add also about, for instance, um, I, can, I have to say that you said before just uh, that it's good to publish soon after doing the because then you take another uh, the other interest and it is also like this for me in, presently because i'm uh, conducting research on in kerala on programming yeah. but i'm saying because uh, for instance uh, in um, in kerala in general there are drums for several communities drums are like uh, uh, sacred instruments representing the baby. But I, I was thinking, uh, when you just said about uh, uh, what you said about the Torah, it's exactly what they do for the icon in, tem in Brahmanical, Tantric Brahmanical temples. Uh, the icon, it's just given proper funeral, like uh, a Brahmin, not as any, uh, any simple man, like a Brahmin. And in, in a similar way, the Miravu, uh, which is the drum, which is played in uh, Kudiyattam, uh, that is a Sanskrit theater, uh, one of the most ancient uh, theatrical forms still practiced. Um, the Miravu uh, receives documents 
like a Brahmin. And when it supposedly gets broken, the, the, the body of the drum, it is buried also like a Brahmin. So uh, something similar is also there. And in the same way, the most important instrument that is played in the most sacred and sacred, also ritual, in this, in, always in Brahmanical temples, it's called Maram. This Maram is as um, to the Redang. Even the Miravu, which is a, a vase, like a vase, uh, that is called, the, one of his name, its names is Mridanga. Um, they call it, musicians call him also, uh, the, uh, old generation musicians call him also, call it also Mridanga. And, and while the, this drum, the Maram, which is played in, in temples for the most sacred, it is a kind of, the skins are almost identical to Ridangam Pakavaj. So it is exactly the, the same the same kind of instrument. It, it is considered as the most sacred one. And they also treat him they treat it like uh, like the like the Mirabu. I mean it's a it's a very well, very much respected instrument. And also um, even in the in this instrument we can uh, I find our as symbolical associations with the deities. So it's, uh, I think that um, I, it would be interesting, this is also something which I'm searching, the connection with the, with the Mridang. When, when this uh, Maram has been introduced in temples in, with this shape, because in the context of, uh, the Brahmanical context is, uh, is the same, but the, sh the shape is the same. So, and also the, the symbolical associations are almost identical. So it would be interesting when it has been absorbed. It is connected again what I was saying before, that from uh, central of Mughal court, then it spread all over India. And this and Mughals also uh, were uh, supportive also of Vaishnava uh, cults. My connection maybe is, can you hear me? You're, you're breaking up a little bit, but we can still hear uh, you. Yes, yes, uh, it was uh, everything. So uh, just to add on your, uh, uh, your comment, what indeed was very pertinent and interesting. Yeah. Yes, of course, uh, uh, one thing that uh, musical instruments have um, that is in a sense almost human is a voice. Uh, they produce sound. They, the sound emerges mysteriously from uh, a cavity uh, that you can't see. Um, and so I, I think this perhaps is one, is one reason why musical instruments are, are particularly um, endowed with um, person-like uh, attributes. Uh, in Nepal, where I've uh, done a lot of uh, research in recent years, um, the um, uh, 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 the the god of music and dance uh, is uh, Nasa Dyo, who is Natya Deva, um, and he is believed to reside in instruments, um, uh, and uh, so um, the sound of the instruments is the sound of Natya Deva um, emerging. So um, yeah, this is I think very uh, widespread. Uh, um, and fascinating uh, phenomenon. Um, so thank you for that, those comments. And um, yeah, uh, thank you again for the book. And I'm uh, very eager to hear uh, what our uh, Indian colleagues uh, uh, have to say uh, on these matters. So um, perhaps I could uh, hand back to uh, Professor Gar. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor Richard, for uh, very interesting views, uh, your experiences, and raising pertinent questions, uh, and also giving a lot of uh, valuable information. Uh, it was very nice to uh, listen to you. I'm, I'm sure all participants must have enjoyed your wonderful uh, narration uh, about 
And and I, I fully agree with you that uh, akawas is not just an, a musical instrument. It is more than that. And it is it is it is uh, connected with not just music but various form of dance, kathak, like odissi, and uh, all all kind of. Wide uh, across uh, India, with uh, there's so many so much diversity, but uh, it, it is it is connected with different regions and uh, having number of connections. So thank you very much. And now I would like to invite uh, uh, Dr. Sunira Kasliwal, uh, who is a, an artist, teacher, and researcher in the field. Uh, currently with Delhi University, uh, have served various positions in music department. Faculty of Music in Delhi University. So, over to Professor Kasliwa. Namaskar, and very good evening to all of you. And Mr. Kipun, very good morning to you. And I am thankful to the IGNCA to invite me to uh, share my thoughts on this uh, very profound subject. And uh, for that, I am thankful to Mr. Joshi and Mr. Gaur. Uh, Mr. Gaur, who is the Dean and Head of Kalanidi. And I am very thankful to him for providing me a photocopy of the book. Uh, this is a wonderful book. Uh, the, the Indian drum of the King God and the Pakhavaj of Nathdwara by Paolo Pesciola. Uh, excuse me if I am not pronouncing the surname properly. Mr. Paula, first of all, I must congratulate you on the, uh, on the, on reading your book. I have come through so many, uh, so many things which I have not, uh, known earlier. And the other thing is that, uh, to know about the instrument, which is so, so near to us that uh, sometimes we we don't see through it uh, so many concepts so many things about and you are showing me uh, for showing those aspects through you your book thank you very much for that it's a wonderful task you have done and it's a very interesting and informative book Deva in his book musical instrument attributes the origin of bifacial drum to India, Indian soil. And I think uh, he's right in this because we find bifacial drums in all over India in abundance in classical, regional, folk, and tribal traditions. Scholars have described these three basic characters of Indian drums, which are uh, presently in all the, uh, uh, which are in the Pakhavaj also. Firstly, the use of multiple layers on the membranes. Secondly, the use of some kind of device to tune them, because tuning is very important for us. And the third, the material like siahi used for the, to give it a nice tone. The siahi makes the sound deeper and resonating. Both northern and southern rhythm possesses these three features. Pakhavaj and Mridangam are the developed forms of the same ancient instrument named Mridanga and Tripushkar, as Mr. Paola Paula has shown us with the photograph. While dealing with the subject, the author dealt in length, describing and in a sort establishing that the instrument Pakhavaj is considered aus auspicious. For us Indians, it is something which we take it for granted. I mean, for us, all the musical instruments are auspicious. Like Mr. Vidis has told us that uh, we, we think that the Lord Shiva resides in the musical instrument. But I think uh, uh, for, first of all, because Veena is with Saraswati, and there is a story also about the Saraswati that she recites in all the instruments because he, she recites in the wood, in the tree, and the instruments are made of out of wood. So, so that is why the, all the musical instruments are precious, auspicious to us. 
but the way the author did it is very interesting here i would like to quote sangeet parijat which calls the mridang kalyankari or mangalvadya and says that because all the deities reside into it it is possible before ahopal uh, the who, the writer of sangeet parijat charangdev speaks about the ek tantri veena in this manner he also called the uh, ek tantri veena sarva mangala or mangalkari nowadays we call sa chehnai a mangalvadya and this is this is not written anywhere about uh, about chehnai but we find that everywhere when we start with something we we have a chehnai recital and it is it is considered very auspicious i have to point out on a few points first of all first is that when we see the various texts we found that in natya shastra mridang is a very important instrument along with panav and dardur but by the time of sangeet ratnakar patal becomes a more important instrument than mridang patal is described of two kinds margi and desi and it is also explained by kalina that pata is the modern dholak so uh, the dholak becomes the pata becomes more important than the uh, mridang and in nagar the mridang is called mardal how were the mardal is the mridang only because the way it is described and the mnemonics and the shape it describes but uh, it it seems that the mardal is a variant of mridang and it it is not a primary instrument in its time but again in sangeet parijat mridang is become becomes the important instrument because sangeet parijat mridang is described in uh, as a primary percussion instrument and patah gets only a brief description and to in two lines although these two lines are very important because it gives the impression that the uh, the uh, the pata with uh, thin skin uddali is uh, accompanied with vocal music so we get a chronological historical evidence of the instrument which uh, which is in continuation and i think that uh, all are, all are agreeable on this point and mr paula is also agreeable on this point is that true mr paula yes i am having i'm just starting again the video i'm having problem with connection so it was coming and going can you uh, i cannot reply because i could not follow properly i was just going to to tell okay, you i cannot okay. because your uh, because your book says that you you agree that the it is it the continuation and with your uh, with your uh, pictures you have shown us in the beginning you are agreeable that the uh, the tradition is in continuation the second point is, point is regarding the term pakhavach in in parijat which is a text written in later 17th century and where mridang is described he has not mentioned the word but in your book you are uh, you are giving an impression that the pakhavaj word the term pakhavaj has come in the at the time of akbar whereas the uh, sangeet parijat is written in the late fe- uh, 17th century and in the time of shah jah uh, so uh, uh, in the time of i think jahangi so why how come that ahobal has not given the name pakhavat into it i i am not sure whether the the term pakhavat has come into being till then because uh, ahob is considered the the main uh, is supporting the northern indian music and uh, if pakhavat term was there at that time he might have Uh, given it in his 
book i am agreeable with the author that uh, uh, pakhavaj is a vernacular term it must have been given after its association with vallabh sampradaya uh, and it is of bridge bhasha because we get a few other words like avuj adavuj or avaj which are all the derivatives of vadya baj or baja in my opinion you can light on that mr paulo hello can you hear me my yes yes we can my, yes. my line is not coming comes and going so i i think i uh, for what i heard that you were asking uh, about uh, the emergence of the name of the pakavaj the attribution yes, of pakavaj yes the yes it is uh, written in the nartana nirmaya Yes, there uh, the Bakavaj is equated to uh, the Vedang. But in any case, I think that the name have gone. Both the names have been used and still are used in this, in this similar way. Even uh, the, if I'm not wrong, the book of uh, Bagals he speaks of Vedang, of Bakavaj as Vedang, and even in a, in a recording of uh, himself. It is yes, the, the, the track of uh, solo, Pakavich solo Mridanti. So the, the two words uh, are uh, the two names are interchangeable. Have been used. They are synonym. Uh, they are synonym. Uh, yes. So third, my third point is regarding the patak or the bowl. Sharang Dev gives sixteen patakshar, but Parijat talks about twenty patakshars. nowadays as told to me by dalchand ji 11 or 12 patakshras are there in uh, parijat there are there are a few are a few vadya prabandhas which uses the bowls which are used in southern indian mridangam playing like kundi ruku thari ruku kundukuku kundukit so nowadays these vadya prabandhas are not used in pakhavat this description gives us an idea that parijat karta or the parijat writer either knowing the vadya prabandhas of mridangam of south or till then that is 17th century the southern and northern variants of mridangam were not came into being it's a later happening so can you throw some light on that also or mr dalchand ji can say us something about that dalchand ji aap bata sakte hain ki ye jo maine abhi vadya prabandh padhe hain kya aise vadya prabandh abhi pakhavaj mein aap log bajate hain ya kahan kis jagah ke vadya mein baste hain like kundi riku hari riku kundukuku kundukit etc dekhiye aisa hai parivartan jo hai srishti ka niyam hai अब जैसे जैसे हम जिस जमाने में रहते हैं उस जमाने के अनुसार बहुत सी चीजें जो होती हैं उस टाइम पे रहती हैं पर आगे हम जैसे आगे बढ़ते हैं तो उसको देखते जरूरत पड़ती है थोड़ा कम कर लेते हैं और कुछ अगर ज्यादा है तो कुछ ज्यादा बढ़ा लेते हैं तो ये जमाने का वो है उस टाइम पे ऐसे वर्ड थे कुछ तो हमें मिलते हैं अभी आज जो संगीत है आज जो संगीत हो रहा है क्या आप निश्चित कह सकते हैं कि वो संगीत रचना करते हैं या आपके क्या कहते हैं भरतनाट्य के साथ रहते हैं हाँ मूल सिद्धांत वो जरूर हैं लेकिन परिवर्तन तो हुआ है और परिवर्तन आज हम देखते हैं कि वो नाट्य शास्त्र में जो वर्णित संगीत है उसी को हम चौदहवीं पंद्रहवीं सोलहवीं शताब्दी में देखते हैं तो टोटली चेंज हो जाता है आज जो संगीत हमारा है आज जो है वो काफी हद तक अकबर काल से मिलता है आपने एक बात जरा मुझे समझ नहीं पाया इंग्लिश तो उतनी मेरी अच्छी नहीं है शास्त्रीय जो नाम है वो है मृदंग शास्त्रीय शब्दावली है मृदंग हाँ। और वो हाँ और हम लौकिक में उसको पखावज कहते हैं और ये पखावज नाम कब आया ये बात हाँ। है जी। तो नाट्य शास्त्र में इसका नाम मृदंग है ठीक है उसके बाद में जब रत्नाकर लिखा गया है तो वहां पर सारंग जी ने कहा है कि जिस वाद्यिक की मुनि ने चर्चा की है उसी का मैं आगे बढ़ा रहा हूँ तो वो बात वहां पर उन्होंने मरजल नाम दिया है मरजल मरजल फिर उसके बाद में हमें रिसेंटली जब भक्ति काल आता है भक्ति काल तो भक्ति काल में हमें जो है मृदंग की चर्चा भी मिलती है उनके पदों में 
है उनके बुरज की मुरज के बारे में भी मालूम पड़ता है और पखावज के बारे में पख माने ये हिस्सा आप देख पा रहे हैं मुझे हेलो सब दिख रहा है दिख रहा है ना ये पख माने ये हिस्सा पक्ष 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 आपका वो हाँ वो दूसरा अर्थ है वो दूसरा एक संस्कृत में अर्थ अलग हो जाएगा तो ब्रजभाषा में बता रहा हूँ हमारे जो ब्रजभाषाओं कहते हैं कि आदमी के पक्ष कौन से हैं पंख पकुआ यानी पंख पंख से आपका मतलब है हाँ तो हमारी आकृति भी जब बजाते हैं तो वो जैसे 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 पंख पंख हाँ। इस तरीके से हाँ। बजाते हैं ना हाँ। तो हमारे पकुआ है ये पख आवज ये लोक लोक नाम है पखावज तो ये ब्रजभाषा में मिलता है दूसरा संस्कृत में मिलता है हमें पक्षवाद्य पक्ष माने साइड दो साइड का वाद है ना ये तो संस्कृत में हमें ये मिलता है तो धीरे धीरे करके ये चेंज हुए हैं और हम वहां सोलह अक्षरों का नियम बताया गया है नाट्य शास्त्र में फिर अब वो मेडिल मेडिल का ए, किस तरीके से यूज हुआ है यूज हुआ है मुझे ज्यादा बारे में उसके बारे में हमें साक्ष्य नहीं मिलते हैं लेकिन होते होते अब जब घराना व्यवस्था एक परंपरा हमारे यहाँ पर हमारे नाथ द्वारा परंपरा भी बोलते हैं घराना भी बोलते हैं तो हमारा जो है परम पारंपरिक ढंग से जो हमारी शब्दावली है जो पटाक्षर है वो बारह प्लस तेरह धा संयुक्त रूप से तो संयुक्त रूप से दो हाथों से बसता है इसलिए धा हाँ हाँ और तो बारह शब्द आप बजाते हैं हाँ हाँ तो वह है ता दी थुन ना ते त क त ग ग न धा धा संयुक्त रूप से अब कुछ अक्षर ऐसे हैं कि जो पंडित जी आपने पंडित जी आपको रोकना चाहती हूँ आपने मेरे को एक बार बताया था कि आप झे और खर वाद्य खर शब्द भी बताते हाँ, अब अब अभी, अभी उसी उसी पे मैं आ रहा हूँ हाँ, तो फिर उनके आश्रित जो बोल है आश्रित आश्रित सपोर्टिंग आश्रित जो बोल रहे हैं वो है झर झे है जो दोनों हाथों से बजा के बजाया जाता है खिर रही जे एक्चुअली वाइब्रेशन में करेंगे हम जैसे दी अभी इसको घर्षण करके निकालेंगे खिर दी खिर बीच की उंगली से निकालते हैं वो करके घर्षण करके तो खिर और झलांग तो बहुत से शब्द फिर उसके साथ में जिसको कहते हैं आश्रित वर्ड आश्रित पटाक्षर तो मैन हमारे यहाँ पर तो तेरह है और घरानों में अलग अलग है पागल दाजी घराने में सात मानते हैं पायलो पायलो क्योंकि पायलो ने सीखा है वो राम रामकिशोर दास से भी सीखा है तो रामकिशोर दास जी स्वर्गीय रामकिशोर दास जो आपके अवधि घराने से थे तो वो सात मानते थे उनकी वो तो पागल दास जी के शिष्य थे हाँ हाँ तो हम लोग तेरह मानते हैं तो ये है कि मृदंग और पखावज बहुत से लोग तेरह मानते हैं एक एक मिनट डालचिन जी मैं यहाँ पर रोकना चाहूँ तो वो जो सात मानते हैं वो कौन से आई थिंक एक चार अक्षर तो सब में ही है चार अक्षर फोर फोर वर्ड फोर पटाक्षर एनी पखावट दी सुन ना एंड ऑल्सो वहां मृदंगम में भी बोलते हैं ना वहां भी बोलते हैं मृदंगम में भी बोलते हैं मृदंगम में भी बोलते हैं तो ये चार चार जो है हमारे यहाँ पर ये तो प्रमुख है ही तो इसको ऐसा बताते हैं ऐसी किविदंती है कि ये ब्रह्मा के चारों मुखों से निकले अच्छा तो किविदंतियों का भी संगीत में बहुत महत्व होता है हर कुछ चीज लिखी नहीं जा सकती तो क्योंकि संगीत में ये चीज है कि बहुत सी चीजें पीढ़ी दर पीढ़ी चली आ रही हैं पारंपरिक ढंग से चली आ रही है मुंह जवानी मुंह जवानी भी चली आ रही है तो लेकिन वो किविदंती का महत्व तब है कि वो बात जो है हवा में ना उड़ाई जाए उसका कुछ महत्व हो यानी कि वो गले से उतर जाए किविदंतियों का भी महत्व तो है लिखित में नहीं है बहुत सी चीजें तो ये ये सच है कि हमारे यहाँ वो तादी फुलना तो प्राय सभी घरानों में बजाते हैं और उनका रचना भी होती है और मृदंग पखावज पखावज जो है वो लोक लोक शब्द नहीं आप अभी डाल के आप, आपने चार बेसिक वर्ड बताए और वो तीन शब्द बताइए जो कि पागल जी के घराने में थे आ, वो शायद मेरे अंदाज से ये पायलो बताएंगे इन्होंने सीखा है वो उनसे पूछे जो है दी थुन्ना ते ते घा का ऐसा कुछ है झे कै ऐसा कुछ है मुझे याद नहीं आ रहा है लेकिन उनके साथ है वो भी धा भी उनका आत्मा आ जाता है 
तो ऐसा उनके अलग अलग देखिए घराना व्यवस्था जब हमारे यहाँ पर आई है शुद्ध बात है कि अपनी अपनी विशेषताएं हैं और उनके अपने अपने निकालने के तरीके हैं अपनी अपनी सोच है लेकिन कुल देखते हैं देखिए अब धा तो बदल नहीं सकता है कुछ शब्द ऐसे जो सभी घरानों में यूज होते हैं तो आ, उनकी अपनों अब उनको वर्तने का अंदाज है जो अंदाज जिसका डिफरेंट है वो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट घराने बनते गए और हमारे यहाँ विशेष करके हम लोग इसको परंपरा ही बोलते हैं नाथ नाथ घराना नहीं बोलते आप घराना भी बोलने लगे अब बोलते भी है लेकिन परंपरा को गोर जी की सेवा पीढ़ी दर पीढ़ी उसको करते आए और पारंपरिक ढंग से करते आए और क्योंकि गुरु पुरुषोत्तम दास जी ने और हमारे उनसे पहले के जो पकाब जी थे उन्होंने उसको प्रसार प्रसार किया तो अब घराना का यहाँ अलग अलग बातें हैं अलग अलग सोच हैं आ, क्योंकि ये आया है मेरे अंदाज से मुझे जहां तक लगता है कि वो प्राचीन हमारी भारतीय संस्कृति के हिसाब से तो परंपरा ही चली आ रही वेद में जब भी बोलते हैं कि साउथ की परंपरा है ये कश्मीर की परंपरा है बनारस की परंपरा है वेद 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 के अंदर में घराना व्यवस्था घराना बोलते हैं हमारी तो वैदिक परंपरा है सांवेदीय सांवेद का उपवेद है गंधर्व वेद तो वेदो नाम सांवेद उसी भगवान श्री कृष्ण कहते हैं कि वेदो नाम सांवेद वेदो में सांवेद और कृष्ण जो है वो जो है सौंदर्य का एंड है वहां पर अब उसी में से वो संगीत है जिस जिस संगीत के जिस संगीत के अंदर में कृष्ण रह, रहते हैं वो भयानक तो हो नहीं सकता अब जो हम देखते हैं है कि इस वीरत का मतलब डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू ई एफ नहीं है या जो है क्या भयानकता लिए हुए नहीं है उसके अंदर में श्रृंगार भी होना चाहिए अब देखिए रात में तो पखावजी बजाई जाती थी ना रात को क्या मानते हैं आप श्रृंगार रस मानते हैं ना रात लीला भगवान श्री कृष्ण जब रात करते थे तो उसकी एकम्पनी कौन करता था पखावज करती थी मृदंग करती थी तो जब मृदंग उसकी संगत करती थी और आप बार वो राष्ट्रीय हम वीर रथ बजाएंगे तो वो बात तो नहीं आएगी ना उसमें श्रृंगार भी आप और वीर रथ भी था कुछ रसे हैं जो संगीत में नहीं है तो वो अपरोक्ष रूप में वो भी आ जाते हैं जब हम बुरी तरह से बजाएंगे उसको तो भयानक अपने आप ही आ जाएगा उसके अंदर भी तो एक लिसनर को वो व्यवस्थ मिल जाएगा उसको लिसनर को पंडित जी पायलो को पंडित जी पायलो का शायद कनेक्टिविटी uh, प्रॉब्लम है तो मुझे आप बताइए कि जो दो बोल विशेष तौर से नाथ द्वारा परम पर आते हैं धूमकेट और तीन नाथ जी जी इन पर कुछ आप हमारे यहाँ पर शायद एक एक उसने हमारे चर्चा जो कर रहे थे उन्होंने पूछा था कि वो स्तुतियों के बारे में शायद तो हमारे हाँ हमारे घराने में नाथद्वारा घराने में पंचदेव स्तुति पंचदेव स्तुति विशेष कर बजाई जाती है जैसा पखावज और कुछ शब्द लेके वो रचना की है बहुत लंबी है आ, उसको बोलना तो शायद मेरे लिए मुश्किल है शायद तो तक दग तट मैं सुनाई देता हूँ तक दग तट दग दिस इज स्तुति पर पंचदेव स्तुति नाथ द्वारा और तो अच्छा इसमें नाथ द्वारा की है नाथ द्वारा जी और पठावा जी नहीं बजाते हैं नहीं अब बजाने लगे हैं अब वो देखिए अभी अब आप ये हम आजाद देश में हैं कोई भी अपने को कह देता है कि ये हमारे घराने की है ये हमारे घराने की है तो लेकिन इसका प्रमाण है कि आपको मृदंग सागर में मिलेगी और मृदंग सागर का पीरियड 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 जो है वो लगभग सौ साल से ऊपर ही है सौ साल पहले वो लिखी थी मृदंग सागर जो बुक है तो हमें उसके अंदर में इस रचना को मिलता है ये रचना अच्छा, लिखी हुई है ठीक ठीक तो करीबन सौ डेढ़ सौ वर्ष का तो इसका प्रमाण है ये मृदंग सावर में जो है तो वहां है तक दग 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 जय 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 जय
पंचदेवी स्थिति है इसमें वीर रस भी है श्रृंगार रस भी है और भक्ति रस भी है तो प्राचीन है तो हमारे यहाँ पर क्योंकि ये साज जो है अध्यात्म से जुड़ा हुआ है और इस करके नाथ द्वारा में ये विशेष अध्यात्म से जुड़ा हुआ है क्योंकि वहाँ ठाकुर की सेवा ही पखावत से की जाती है मृदंग से की जाती है मैंने आपसे पूछा धिनक और धिनक अब धिनक वही मैं बता रहा था कि धिनक अब देखिए धिनक जो है श्रृंगार प्रधान है और वीर रस प्रधान है धैत जो प्रणाम से धैत बोलने में आपको जोर पड़ेगा जोर पड़ेगा और धैर्य नक श्रृंगार रस तो ता ता सामान्य ता धैन नक धत धैन नक धत धत धैन नक धत धत धैन नक धत धैन नक धत धैन नक धैन नक ये इसी ये रचना है धैर्य नक का बाद इसको बोलते हैं इसी को हम सोलों में भी बजाते हैं संगत में भी बजाते हैं और वो हम इसमें दोनों रसों को लाने की कोशिश करते हैं क्योंकि जब अगर मान लीजिए श्रृंगार प्रधान रचना है तो वहां हम धनक जो बजाएंगे वो श्रृंगार प्रधान बजाएंगे और जहाँ वीर वो कैसे करेंगे आप वो कैसे करेंगे वो ऐसे करेंगे जैसे थोड़ा कम रखेंगे अच्छा बोलों पर फोर्स कम रखेंगे यस 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 तो वो उसके हिसाब से क्यों देखिए संगीत में काकू भेद काकू भेद बहुत मायने रखता है अब वो काकू भेद जो है अगर हम गाते हैं तो वह काकू भेद भेद है जब हम वादन करते हैं तो हस्त भेद तो वो जो काकू भेद है हम इसको उसमें पकावत से करने की कोशिश करते हैं मैंने थोड़ा सा इस पर काम किया है मैंने काम किया है और क्योंकि उसका मेन कारण ये है कि मैंने गाना सीखा है और गाने की थोड़ी सी मुझे नॉलेज है तो मैं कोशिश करता रहता हूँ कि रचना के हिसाब से और आप जैसे मान लीजिए गुरु पुरुषोत्तम दास जी ने एक रचना रची थी मेघपरण मेघपरण तो उसके अंदर में वीर श्रृंगार रस भी है तो जो नदी का जो कलकलाहट है वो श्रृंगार हमें प्रदान करती है और जो मेघों की गर्जना है अब देखिए इसको मेघ नाद भी बोलते हैं पखावज को इसका जो नाद है उसको मेघ नाद बारिश की जो जो बरसात का जो मेघ होता है उसका उस जैसा नाद मैंने एक बार बताया था कि आप जब वर्षा की रचना गाते हैं तो उसके अंदर में सबसे सुटेबल साउंड हो का बहुत अच्छा लगता है इसका मेन कारण यह है कि इसका साउंड उससे मैच करता है इसका कतई ये मतलब नहीं है कि साहब वो धू धड़ाक जो है मेघ का मतलब वो श्रृंगार प्रधान यानी जो कानों को अच्छा लगे उसमें संगीत होना चाहिए बेगनाथ का मतलब ये नहीं है कि आप जो का बड़ी जोर से उसको बखाव उसको फाड़ दो या जो का इतना जोर का साउंड हो यानी कानों को जो अच्छा लगे उसमें लगे कि हाँ ये है तो उसमें एक रचना है मैं सुना रहा था खा का घना नगारा जैसा रो त्रिस्त जाति गति एक बार ने हमारे नाथ द्वारा घका का घना नगारा जैसा रो नाड़ी से कारा से चाहू प्रका मेघ बर से चाहू जल दाल 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 आप हो रहा या बारिश का बरसना लास्ट में श्रृंगार रस है तो मेन चीज ये है कि आपने कैसा किया है आप कैसा सोचते हैं तो आप अगर मान लीजिए कि जैसी दृष्टि वैसी सृष्टि कह सकते हैं अब आप अगर मान लो हर चीज को वीर रस से ही सोच रहे हैं तो श्रृंगार रस कहाँ से आएगा तो आपको उस दृष्टि बनानी पड़ेगी वो सोच पैदा करनी पड़ेगी और मैं जो है संगीत इस चीज को बहुत महत्व देता हूँ व्यक्ति विशेष आपने कैसा किया है जिन खोजा उन पाइया कह गए दास को कबीर तो आपने कैसा खोजा है उसको और आपने उस पर चिंतन मनन कैसा किया है तो धिनक हमारे यहाँ बजाया जाता है धूमकिट का प्रयोग बहुत किया जाता है धूमकिट पर भी कुछ बताए धूमकिट की बहुत सी रचनाएं हैं और जैसे आप जैसे शास्त्रों में मिलता है हमें प्रबंध मिलते हैं प्रबंध का ही आधुनिक रूप हम परण कह सकते हैं अच्छा तो अब आप अब देखिए 
की परान है अब ये धूमकेट को हम कहाँ कहाँ फंसा सकते हैं उसको मतलब जिसको हमको एक जिसको कहते हैं ना कि कोई हमने अंग चला कोई छंद चला हमने अब जैसे हमारे धाग गिंडा गे गिता गे गिता ये इसको हम कहते हैं थपिया का आवाज या झाला झाला आप आपके सजाते हैं इसको हम झाला कहते हैं तो इसके अंदर में जब झाला आप बजाते हैं तो उसके अंदर में आप तानों का पैच डालते हैं अंदर में बीच बीच में आप वो लंगर डालते हैं उसका तो हम पखाव में भी अच्छे करते इसमें फीलिंग ये है कि वो जैसे बारिश की बूंदों की सड़ रही है झाले का मतलब बारिश की बूंदों की झार वो जो चलती है उस तरीके की झार तो वो आना चाहिए झाले का मतलब ये नहीं है कि आपके जो है क्या है वो तैयारी में आप जो है साहब आप वो इतना ज्यादा वीर रस दिखा दो उसमें वो 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 रस है तो उसके अंदर में कैसे हवा उसको बरसात को काटती है तो एक माहौल क्रिएट करते हैं हम तो ऐसे उसको धमकट को हम कहाँ कहाँ किस तरीके से हम उसको यूज कर सकते हैं ये यूज करने वाले पर निर्भर करता है तो पंडित जी मेरा एक क्वेश्चन और है कि क्या जैसा आप बात कर रहे हैं क्या आपकी परंपरा के दूसरे कलाकार भी इसी सब चीजों को बजाते हैं या इसी प्रकार की बात करते हैं वही वाली बात है सब करते हैं सब पारंपरिक ढंग से तो सभी करते हैं लेकिन यहाँ मैं एक बात कहूंगा की एक पिता की चार औलाद होती है चारों की सोच चारों को करने का तरीका हाँ मूल तो जरूर वही होता है मूल वही होता है पारंपरिक ढंग से लेकिन सबकी सोच अपनी अपनी अलग होती है आप जिन गुरु से सीखे हुए हैं आप चार पांच या दस या बीस जितने भी शिष्य थे सबकी अपनी अलग अलग तरीका है हाँ बेसिक वो जो गुरुओं ने बताया है उसी को तो परंपरा या घराना व्यवस्था मानते हैं वो जरूर रहेगा मौजूद लेकिन सोच अपनी डालनी पड़ती है धन्यवाद पंडित जी और इन द एब्सेंस ऑफ पायल आई थिंक आंसर ऑल माय क्वेश्चंस थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी ओके पायलो हियर आई एम जस्ट गम यस आई एम जस्ट बैक ओके पायलो पायलो फर्स्ट ऑफ कांग्रेजुलेशन एंड माय ब्लेसिंग ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच इन इन योर ऑप्शन uh mr uh, pandit dalchan ji has explained and given answers of all my queries and in the meanwhile he he spoken in his spoken words padhant uh, yes something i could this for the uh, uh, showcase of his parampara and uh, he also uh, told me about the dhumkit bowls if you want to uh, highlight something about these bowls then It's fine. I, uh, something. No, I was uh, before uh, this problem about uh, my connection started. You were saying something about uh, the balls in general. On, I mean, in uh, texts, and in there, the text. there is yes, that there is a variety. There are varieties of balls. Um, Which are nowadays? Yes. 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 And that is, I think, interesting because now. Um, If we go in texts, there are uh, a number of these uh, of these balls which are no more uh, strokes. Or are they also behind? I mean, not only balls but uh, strokes, and that yes. is quite, uh, quite interesting. And it again shows the the movement of the and the process of changing, continuous change yes, of these things. Balls. There are various opinions. There are some musicians who, like uh, for instance, Baldip Singh, maintains that uh, um, uh, the Nanaka are also used in their uh, in his Quran. And uh, right, uh, various yes, in a lot uh, of ways. Dr. Dr. Palo, I have to interrupt in this very very interesting discussion because I have to see the our guest. Yes, already. Fifteen uh, twenty minutes 
yes. ahead of our closing schedule and i'm sure uh, they are they are they must be having some commitment and other things so uh, i i know this is a very wonderful or very interesting uh, in interaction and discussion and i'm sure everybody must have enjoyed it and uh, uh, we may not have much interaction now with the uh, panelist among the panelists but last thing which i want to there is only one question which i want to take up before we close that is uh, uh, gopal krishnan uh, basically he has raised a question have you uh, question in the q and a that is uh, your experience with the uh, mezabo and uh, pakwas uh, basically he wants to know your experiences in these two uh, so would like to say something uh, on this or yes uh, my experience with mirabo is not practical but only uh, I mean, I as a witness, I've gone there. I've attended um, hundreds of performances of Kudiyattam uh, and uh, Nangyarkutu, but I've recorded the entire repertoire uh, of the thanks to the collaboration of uh, um, Mirabu player um, Sajid Kumar, uh, Margi Sajid Kumar. So uh, and um, since. Thanks to my experience in the Bridanga in Pakavaj, I have analyzed also uh, the repertoire of, in particularly, I've also already written um, an article, it's going to be published, on the, um, the ritual repertoire, because the, the, there is a Purapad, uh, Purapad is the first section of uh, Kutiatam uh, performance, that is the ritual part. Compositions in this part of uh, repertoire are uh, extremely interesting, and there are also some some aspects which are relating to uh, with Pakavaj. But and, um, they are in a way different uh, approaches, I have to say. Uh, so I think that in this case, the Mirabu is one of the examples in which, uh, as I argue in the book, the name uh, uh, as being tributed to an instrument because of its importance, of the importance of the name Redanga. And of course, the Mirau is an extremely important instrument in Kerala tradition, and it's a wonderful instrument. But uh, the association, I think, is more in this, um, because the, the, um, the repertoire of this instrument is uh, um, particularly associated with the uh, theater, with drama. Uh, that is something that, in ancient, although ancient uh, Mirlanga was connected, maybe in this way we can find a connection between the instruments. But with contemporary, um, not much, not much, you can say. Thank you, Dr. Paolo. And thank you, Professor uh, Sunira Kasliwal. You made it so interesting. Uh, wow. I remember when I talked to he was hesitant. कि मैं आ, क्या बोलूंगा लेकिन पंडे जी आपने इस प्रोग्राम में एक नया ही एंटरटेनमेंट और इंटरेक्शन क्योंकि प्रैक्टिकली जो बुक के कंटेंट्स को आपने सामने नहीं आएंगे तो आई थिंक आपने बहुत खूबसूरत तरीके से हमें आ, उस उस चीज से रूबरू कराया और आपके प्रेजेंस से परंपरा से क्योंकि सही मायनों में किसी भी बुक का किसी भी कंटेंट की वैल्यू तभी है जब हम उसकी एक्चुअल कंटेंट्स uh, को रिलेट कर सके अपनी डे टू डे लाइफ से अपने कल्चर से अपने ट्रेडिशन से तो आप जैसे आर्टिस्ट uh, बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है और आपने आके इस प्रोग्राम को बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग तो सबसे पहले तो मैं आपको धन्यवाद करना चाहूंगा और uh, चाहूंगा कभी मौका मिला तो हम आई से मैं आपको परफॉर्मेंस के लिए भी इनवाइट करेंगे जब आप इनका परफॉर्मेंस करेंगे तब आप देखेंगे वैसे आप लोगों ने उनकी एक सी प्रकाशित की है क्योंकि आपके यहाँ पर है जी जी तो उसके अंदर थैंक यू पंडित डालचंद जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपका और बहुत अच्छा लगा बहुत जुड़े धन्यवाद आप सभी को सभी को धन्यवाद और जो हमारे विदेश से हैं उनको भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू आल्सो थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर गॉड फॉर ज्वाइनिंग मी इन दिस स्पेशल ब्यूटीफुल सेशन and mr paolo i again congratulate you for your contribution on pakhavaj in our repertoire 
Thank you. Thank, thank you, Professor uh, Sunil. And thank you, Professor Richard. Thank you, Professor uh, Kippen, uh, for wonderful views. And you made it really interacting. Uh, this program uh, has been recorded and also available, will be also available on our IGNC YouTube channel. So in future, yeah. you can recommend or refer somebody to your students and uh, other people to listen it. And uh, last but not least, Dr. Paolo, thank you very much for writing such a wonderful book and then also mm. agreeing to have discussion on this book today. Uh, we really honored to have this program and I'm sure our all participants have uh, enjoyed. I still see 25 participants still uh, with us today uh, in, in, in almost two hours, this program. So thank you all mm. participants and uh, we look forward to meeting you again uh, in some other program. And with this, these words, I, I, I close this program and thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Namaste. Namaste.